Let me talk about today local anesthetics. Uh, well, the, there are two types of uh, anesthetic anesthetics. That is general anesthetics and local anesthetics. General anesthetics mean that it is going to produce a loss of sensation to pain uh, to pain with the loss of consciousness. So it means that 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 that. Uh, your patient is anesthetized with the loss of sensation to pain and awareness around the surroundings. In local anesthetics, you see, what happens in local anesthetics, the, the, the uh, action is, is, is being locally and they are called as local anesthetics. So you, in this particular case, loss of sensation is limited to a particular area what you can say and they are not only sensory nerve but they are also uh, spinal nerves that some nerves are max and if they are anesthetized hence the effects of this on the skeletal muscle is also being recorded there thus blockade should be reversible if it is not reversible then it can create problem for your patients then there is a terminology cocaine, coca leaves. It is obtained from a medicinal plant that is called as uh, erythroxylin coca or called as the coca leaves. And uh, this was used uh, by the people uh, in the China. It's, it's indigenous to China, this medicinal plant, and it contains cocaine. And that is called, it is why it is called cocaine leaves. And those people who are going to use this, uh, especially uh, you who are hard workers, so cocaine is a local anesthetics, it is sympathomimetics, and that is why the people used to eat this erythroxylum coca leaves, and they had a problem of cocaine bugs. And in cocaine bugs, the eye, the sclera is red, and you see this sympathomimetic like activity, there's a loss of. Mm, uh, appetite and anorexia and of course sympathomimetics activities are there so the patient never gets tired and they perform very well so so they are in a, in a sense they are uh, sympathomimetic drugs with cardiotonic activity and the patient never tires uh, mm, classification of local anesthetics is important especially uh, if you go so there is amino benzoic acids group and this group contains these sort of drugs you see and the other is the ether group and the amides group in amides uh, you, as the name indicate it is amide and the amides are, are bupivacaine, lidocaine and uh, prilocaine whereas in case of ethers you see this is premoxine premoxine is a drug that is available in the market and with the name of tronolan you see tronolan and this tronolan is of Abbott laboratory and this is this tronolan cream is is is, a, is a, what you can say uh, used as a local anesthetic especially in patients suffering from piles or others so important is that amino benzoic acid group then the ethers and then the mites you have to learn all these things uh, based on the clinical usage, the classification may be attributed as, you see, and that is the topical anesthetics, the, but include benzocaine, cocaine, lidocaine, autotrocaine, and infiltration or field block anesthesia, you see the spinal anesthesia, anesthesia spinal anesthetics drugs, and then the epidural or the caudal anesthesia. So almost all type of uh, local anesthetic drugs are being used. Uh, so far, the application is concerned, so they are, they are classified based on the clinical usage. So you have to remember that in so spinal anesthetia, anesthetics with spinal anesthesia and then epidural anesthetics or epidural anesthesia. Uh, what are the techniques for tropical anesthesia? The situation, you see, in this particular case, the mucosa, the surface mucosa is, is damaged and uh, wounds or that are burns, you apply the ointment, the cream, the gels, and the powders. And what happens that it uh, it, 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 it anesthetizes and thus it works as an 
as, as, as a loss of sensation to pain, which is ineffective uh, in clinically conditioned like keratized area. Once it is a keratized area, of course, it will be very difficult uh, to, 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 to penetrate and then block that particular nerve endings. Uh, the areas, the area where these drugs can be applied, especially the corneal surface, especially if there is a fo foreign particle in your eyes and you use these uh, local anesthetics like Lignocaine, etc., ophthalmic preparation and give for 5 minutes and then till the, that is anesthetized. The reflex responses are there and they are finished and then of course, in the nose, there's a pharynx, larynx, trachea, urethra, and all other regions that may involve the pruritus or hemorrhoids, as the case may be. So, it is going to decrease the itching as well as the loss of sensation of pain. In case of hemorrhoids, you see, as I said in the beginning, there's primoxine, which is used as tronolan cream from Abbott Laboratories, and that is used in the management of piles or pain associated with piles. There's infiltration or block and block anesthesia this is important and the technique is used to block the specific endings of a targeted area that is to be anesthetized one should be sure of the nerve endings and the location and if you are not sure then try this type of anesthetic drug because that will go to the systemic circulation and create problem for you particularly arrhythmia and your patient may be may be may be may be the clinical condition may be worsened so the field block anesthesia is there and of course in the nerve block anesthesia so it is injected closer to the nerve to be anesthetized and thus you perform this like caudal nerve, the radial nerve or the ulnar nerve and you anesthetize the targeted region. Uh, this is a classic example that I have taken it from it is book of uh, pharmacology and therapeutics uh, from FSK Barar you see and uh, if uh, these are the uh, this is a subarachnoid space you see subarachnoid space and this subarachnoid space there is if you see this region is called epidural 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 region and then uh, you can see in the beginning this is the bone of course the bone and then there is a surface membrane that is called periosteum periosteum is here then the dura and then the arachnoid space and in the arachnoid space you see in between there is subarachnoid space and this subarachnoid space you see it is it is here so if a drug is used here that will be called subarachnoid anesthesia or using that this epidural region mean epidural anesthesia or uh, whatever the case is so in case of epidural anesthesia the drug is injected into the epidural space so thus it requires a specialized techniques so as to the drug is inserted, injected, administered into a targeted area that may help is help in anesthetizing. Uh, what important is this is through the foramen magnum you see and the nerve is here. These are the nerve endings and these are called the tropical in the tropical anesthesia you see tropical anesthesia. So the nerve endings are anesthetized. Whereas if you block a region ahead to this particular nerve, then it is called nerve block or fluid block anesthesia. And then the epidural or the <coughs> subarachnoid anesthesia, or as the case may be. So, this was a classification based on the size and the clinical condition. So, the spinal anesthesia, subarachnoid or intrathecal anesthesia, a solution is injected into the subarachnoid space, it reaches the roots of spinal nerve and dorsal root it means it reaches the dorsal root and the spinal nerve in this region and what is important important is that the site of injection that at which it supplies its targeted area to be operated is covered by the respective nerve if it is not injected into a site that the nerve is going to affect covering that particular region then it will not give you the desired anesthesia then solution which have which have which have some specific gravity that is uh, if the specific gravity is the same it is called isobaric and that is isobaric mean that the specific gravity to the cerebral spinal fluid is the same and if the, the solution that you are going to administer is hyperbaric so it will go down and once it go down so 
it can it can it can be helpful and it can be dangerous as well and hyperbaric solution will go and travel down you see if this is the brain you see this is the spinal cord and this is the brain and this cerebral, this cerebrospinal fluid circulation you see so if you are going to inject a particular uh, hyperbaric solution here so it will go then go to travel and it is going traveling down so the ulnar originating from this particular region it will it will be it will be exercise therefore the posture of the patient is important the posture of the patient is important especially in hyperbaric and using this spinal anesthesia and if the posture is not properly maintained your patient may go on to complication like in case of uh, what you can say in case of obstetrics and the hyperbolic solution goes downward the lower portion is called let's call saddle block anesthesia while the patient is in sitting position uh, important is the, the epidural or caudal anesthesia and the needle rest in the epidural space as it, the name indicates which is not the fluid pill and it extends from the foramen magnum to the sacral hiatus thus it is free of the side effects of headache and other neurological symptoms as it required thus this is a very skillful person is needed to conduct this particular type of anesthesia and caudal anesthesia is a variation of epidural anesthesia which the needle enters the epidural space through the sacral hiatus below the ter termination of the dual sac and this is important it is the most suitable anesthesia uh, could do suitable analgesia in obstetrics fetus and mother is free of the systemic effects thus this is good for the uh, pain uh, associated with labor and parturition phenomena and that is why certain people claim that it is painless hospital so they use the epidural or the cordial anesthesia i hope now you understand that thank you